quick. Uh, Eric, your boy of ESPN True Hoop and the A League podcast here with Mr. Tyler Dorsey of Oregon, second round pick, forty first pick we had in this past draft. Man, how you doing, Mr. Dorsey? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> how you like in Atlanta so far? Um, I like it. Um, I haven't been around the city much because I've been. Uh, we had this mini camp for the summer league team, so I've been in the gym mostly and on my free time resting up. But um, I like it out here. Um, definitely uh, embracing the city and uh, getting getting used to the um, culture out here. What did you think about Atlanta before you got here? I, that's, I'm really interested to hear that. I know Atlanta's got plenty of uh, reputations of different things, but I want to hear your <laughs> what you thought about it. Um, I didn't. I didn't. Um, I knew a little bit about the culture, but um, not a lot. Um, I haven't been down here. This is actually my first time being here, actually for a long stay. So, um, oh, okay. I really did. I really didn't know much. Uh, I didn't have any perspectives going into it. Have you have you been to one thing for sure you gotta do. I'm letting you know you gotta go to Waffle House. I don't know if anybody told you about that yet. Oh yeah, yeah, I've been to Waffle House before. What'd you get when you went there? What'd you get? What'd you order? Uh I just ordered a, a waffle, um, side of eggs and side grits and some bacon. Oh, you got the all star there. I see. Alright, you're gonna be just fine, man, in Atlanta. You fitting in just fine. <laughs> I was wondering what yeah. you got. <laughs> That's cool, man. Has you so I mean coming in to this season, um, I mean, we saw you last in the, in, the, in the tournament there. And my man, it was just like constantly you hitting big shots. And I was like, do you got a thing for these big shots? Like, especially that one you hit against Rhode Island. It was like 40 seconds left or something like that. You just pulled up. I was like, this this kid here is just bold. <laughs> so what is up with you and these bold shots, man, you take? Um, I feel like um, I work on these shots um, consistently. So... When it comes to the game and that big moment or that big shot, um, I want to take it mm. as a player. But during a game, I'm definitely reading the defense and I'm gonna make the right play. And if, if it's a double comes, um, I'm gonna kick it to my teammate. But um, in those big shots, um, it was just a one-on-one situation, and uh, I work on those shots a lot. So I just stay confident in myself in those moments. For sure. And, I mean, that not only being the only big shot you've had at tournament, but you also had plenty against Kansas. Uh, and it's interesting, like, you were torturing them for 27 points, but you did kind of the same to Arizona early in the year. I was like, is it was it personal for you against those two schools? Because I know both of them recruited you pretty heavily. Oh, no, definitely not personal. Um, I, I like uh, Arizona and Coach Sean Miller. He's a great coach. Um, I love his attitude towards the game and um, the way he approaches it. So definitely not personal there. Just um, I, we were as a team, we was hot that night and um, we didn't miss a lot of threes. Um, I think we had a record of of threes as a team during that game. And against Kansas, it was just I wanted to get to the Final Four because the year before we had came up short in that Elite Eight game and um, it was just the hunger to get get past that um, Elite Eight game and make it to that Final Four. Do you, that, I mean, you talk about the three-point shoot, and that's that's one of the biggest reasons uh, I think Atlanta brought you in there because they desperately needed that shooting. Is that something you're excited about, knowing that you're walking into a situation where uh, your biggest strength is what they really need at the moment? Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm um, definitely um, going to be ready you know, until I, um, for my opportunity. So I'm um, coming in. That's one of my strengths, and um, I'm just still working on it. Um, I think I'm a good shooter, but I can become a great shooter. Um, I want to improve on my percentages each year. So um, for my rookie year, I, I want to set a goal, a goal that's high. And I'm um, also um, being that playmaker as well and making making plays for my team and also being that secondary ball handler if needed and playing off the ball and on the ball, whatever, whatever coach needs or the team needs. Is is there anything else you think is being overlooked about your game? Um, it, I mean, from your obviously you're going to be as confident as you are, and that's how you get to this level. Got to be confident. But like, what do you feel like people are kind of over overlooking when it comes to your game? Um, I'm a, I'm a good playmaker. Okay. Um, a good playmaker at the one, and I definitely can run the team and run the pace of the game or playing playing at that one. Um, mm-hmm. I think. Um, people overlooked that um my role at Oregon was to play the two and um I played that position but um 
if I need to. I played the one throughout my whole career before that, so if if needed, I, I definitely can play the one, and I'm very comfortable playing the one. Nice. I think people can overlook that sometimes because because you're in a system where you need to play. I was needed to play the two, and you know, I'm a team guy, so I'm gonna do whatever the team needs me to do. For sure, and and even speaking of that, I'm probably. I'll say I'm guilty of it myself. I mean, being on the East Coast, being in the A, being in Atlanta, it's, you can, I mean, you guys playing on the West Coast there. I think a lot of times we over here kind of, like even what Fultz was doing in Washington, the buzz was everywhere. But and sometimes you felt it wasn't even as much as it should have been on you know on this side of the coast here and in certain areas just because it's a West Coast games. I th- you think that kind of plays a role into people maybe missing some parts of your strength because you're playing on the West Coast or whatnot? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, sometimes you know, on the East Coast, people sleep, uh, sleeping uh, around the time <laughs> some of our games come on. So uh, people do miss a lot of our games. And um, most of the time, uh, a lot of people watch March Madness games because it's in a good time where people can catch the game. So I think that's where a lot of West Coast teams or West Coast players surprise a lot of people. Because people can actually catch the games. Is it? Well, I mean, now I know you're. I'm sure you've heard about um, a lot of the reports with Millsap and whatnot, and and, and his future with Atlanta. Uh, still kind of up in the air there, but I mean, is it at least exciting for you, uh, you and John especially, that there's like kind of a new era feels like that's starting with Atlanta Hawks basketball right now. Uh, I mean, they've made the playoffs the last ten years or whatnot, but you can feel that there's a change, a shift going on here. Um, are you guys excited about it? And as well as who else on the team have you talked with so far just about kind of uh, starting this new era off on, on the right foot? Um, yeah, um, I'm definitely uh, I'm excited to be here. And um, whatever, I don't know, happens in free agency happens. But um, we have a nice young core group here coming in. With, um, our, I'm ta- I've been talking to Bembry and Prince. Um, they're on the summer league team, so getting to know them better and gelling with them but um me and collins and them two coming in with that young core group and um we can start start something as young players and, and build off that yeah yeah but um with this free agency um you don't you don't know um what's going to happen a lot of players are free free agents um this year coming up and um not not too many guys on contract but there, there are a couple so you never know what's going to happen for sure going into this season and and you kind of you just mentioned that you've you talk with Torian and and DeAndre I mean have they kind of spoken to you about how demanding Budahosa is defensively with his guards um, and kind of how that's how you earn your your minutes on the floor have they talked to you about that uh yeah um no, we didn't talk about it too much right now uh-huh. um yeah We've been um, getting coached um, by Charles uh, for the summer league stuff. So um, definitely, as a rookie, I already knew coming in um, to be able to get an opportunity or any time on the floor, you're gonna you have to be able to defend your position and also play good team defense. So my mindset coming into it is gonna be that, um, anyways, because um, um, I know coaches demanding of that as well. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Do you have an extra kind of chip on your shoulder being drafted in that second round? Uh, it's interesting enough. I've I work with a couple of people who were, uh, I like you kind of mentioned earlier, just big on March Madness. And when they saw you March Madness, they said that they want he actually wanted to pick Oregon just because of you, uh, even against his alma mater, because he's like this kid can make a lot of big shots. That's kind of what your reputation was, and mm-hmm. yeah. So it was kind of one of those things where. You know, has he? Did he fall further than people expected? Do you did you expect to go? Bit, you know, a little bit higher, and you feel a little bit like you got snubbed there. Um, but does that second round selection kind of put a bigger chip on your shoulder? Um, yeah, I always play with a chip on my shoulder in the first place, but um, definitely it adds another chip to my shoulder uh, on my um, shoulder. Um, as you can see, Bob been on this year one rookie of the year, so um, yeah. mm-hmm. definitely, definitely having that chip on your shoulder as a second rounder coming into it, and then, um, making all the teams that pass on you regret. You know, I'm just, I'm just, um, I'm happy Atlanta took the chance on me and to step in this door, and now I have this chip on my shoulder. And every time I go play, you're gonna see it. Do you, is there any other goals you have of the of the season coming up here? Any 
anyone's for sh- anything for sure you're looking forward to maybe as a rookie in your rookie year or just as a whole just you do, i know i'm sure you want to get on that floor you want to contribute but any you know specific goals you have um not as of right now yeah. uh, i'm taking step by step um first some the league and then second making the making the roster and um and then i go from there but i'm gonna take it step by step is it i mean playing i saw that you played uh for the under 19 team for uh, for Greece and whatnot, do you think that kind of just groomed you for getting ready for this, what you're about to take on here in the NBA and the level of talent you're about to go against, the length and the size and the athleticism and the athletes in the NBA? You think you you think you were at least helped a bit playing for that nineteen uh, under nineteen team? Um, I think that helped, but I think more of the Olympic tryouts helped me more. Okay. Um, going against those pros and professionals and a couple, couple NBA players on that team. And I'm um, just going against them every day in practice. I think I've um, helped my game. And um, I worked out I worked out with Impact so my whole life from um, growing up. So I, I got to work out with pros and just the way they um, approach the game. And um, I think I'm, I'm ready for it. And um, I think it's... With all the athleticism and length, um, I feel like I can play against that and because um, I've been um, prepared before. Have you, do you have any, is there like a mentor that you have directly that you go to to just discuss some things with, you know, whenever you're trying to just pick pick somebody's brain, anybody in NBA or just all around that you go to to, to talk about basketball with? Um, Probably um, nobody in the NBA, um, but... Um, my coaches um, that coached me throughout my career, or my or my dad, um, to talk about little things about the game that they see, that they watching, or in my game. Is there is there anything you've, as far as what they've told you um, after you know after getting drafted or whatnot, that they really want you to improve on, that they can see that maybe you haven't seen or whatnot? But is there anything they they want you to focus on and and, and really work in that area? Um, I feel like they didn't tell me nothing, but um, I know, and they always say, you know, just tighten up my ball handling, okay, and um, becoming a, um, a magician with it, and um, becoming tight where I can get anywhere on, on the court with my handle, and um, I feel like that, and also um, putting strength on, um, not bulking up, but having um, more tensile strength than that and that. So you're, yeah, I think and it's interesting enough. You, I mean, you're joining the Hawk team with Tim Hardaway. I don't, I don't know if you took notice of what Tim did last year, but he made a big jump and he just was a pretty vital. He was a spark for the team that uh, after coming off a season, he struggled the year two seasons before. So that was huge the way he stepped up. But he was also a guy they knocked coming out uh, by his ball handling and um, and maybe his, his strength and whatnot. So two of the same things, but people knew he could shoot the ball. It was just, could he create? And, and you've seen he's kind of developed there. So had the coaches, Atlanta coaches, talked to you about that even, just uh, similar, like their way of their plan to get you, uh, you know, kind of expand your game and whatnot? Good. Um, no, they haven't bugged it up. Um, not, not like those specific things that haven't burned it up yet. Okay, okay. Is there anybody? So even just off off the court, um, what's kind of for people to get to know you as well? What kind of music are you listening to um, daily? What's in your phone right now? If they if they if they could see, what would you? What was the last song you listened to? Um, probably some. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, hold on, let me uh, sign this thing. I want. I, I'm 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 tempted to hear this. Cause now that you're in Atlanta, you're gonna hear a lot of trap music, which I'm sure you. Yeah, yeah, I listen to mostly rap okay. um, music. So uh, I would say I definitely listen to um, some Jeezy. There we go. Um, some Drake and um, Future and Kendrick. There we go. And so I listen to Kodak as well. 
That's a strong five, right? That's a strong group right there. I don't know about the Kodak part, but the rest is I, I'm, I'm feeling the rest of those guys on there. <laughs> yeah, I listen. To the, I listen to a lot of Two, two Chains too. His new album, I, I got that. So oh, pretty girls that. like trap. Yeah, that's a that's a banger right there. That's definitely a banger. <laughs> I was wondering, I was trying to see the top rappers that you, because I know it's a, I didn't know if it was a coastal thing, just a, as far as if you listen to mainly LA, you know, LA rappers or whatnot, but are you kind of influenced? Nah. Just, yeah, you're all around. You don't care where the rapper coming from. Yeah, I don't, I, I mean, you know, I listen to a lot of Kendrick, you know. Yeah. yeah. But um, it doesn't matter for me. What's your favorite Kendrick? Come. What's your favorite Kendrick project? Because I know mine's Section uh, 80. I got to go Section 80. Yeah, uh, I like. Um, um, why am I forgetting? He got damn that just came out. Uh, to yeah, Pimper Butterfly, yeah. yeah. He's got Good Kid, Mad City. Yeah, that's my favorite. Good Kid, Good Mad Kid. City. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. my favorite album he got. That was his first one. Yeah, it's hard to top that first one, but I think. Yeah, I think over time he might eventually top it, man. That's like Nas had to go through the same thing. It's hard to top that first yeah. album. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If you got, I got one more for you. Uh, favorite players in the league and all time. What are, what are some of the guys that that you really enjoy watching? Uh, favorite players in the league right now? Yeah, you can say right now, or you can say all time. It don't even. I mean, which I'll say right now. Let's go right now. Let's do. Let's do that. Uh. That's tough. Um, I'm gonna have to go with the the LA guys, probably uh, Russell, mm-hmm. James, and Kawhi. They all from Southern Cal, so I have to go with my Southern go, Cal. I see you. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Southern Cal players, and, and they they definitely at the top of the league uh, this last season for sure. I see all the, the the a lot of the guys that y'all stick together, man. I gotta give y'all that. It's what if y'all coming from at least around the same area or whatnot, and then y'all closely stick together, man. Are you surprised with the way Kawhi's just kind of taken off? Are you like I, I did you see that coming with him? Um, I knew he could lock up, but his offensive game definitely developed um, through those two three years. So. I, I I saw it coming. All he needed was to add that offensive game, and he did. So he he's deadly right now. He's best one of the best two way players in the in the league. Has to. What about how you felt about the finals that just happened? Were you were you entertained? Was it kind of boring? A lot of people are saying the finals are boring and whatnot. Were you kind of were you bored a little bit there? Um, I wouldn't say boring. It was just kind of kind of lopsided. Yeah. Uh, the the way um Golden State shooting that shooting that three and um them gelling like that it's, it's hard to beat them. Yeah, for sure, for sure, man. Dorsey, it's really been great speaking with you here. I'm gonna probably I don't know when it will be. Maybe I'm definitely gonna miss summer league. I won't be able to cover that, but I'm you know I'll be covering throughout the whole season. So we'll definitely be in touch there. I'll see you most most of the games, especially the home games or whatnot. So it was definitely a joy, man. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Um, look forward to seeing you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, brother.